Hello and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn Wolfslagle and today we are going to be featuring our Outlined Roses and Sending Hoping Wishing Word Dies. These are just released this month and they are a lot of fun. They are these very large outlined images and they are great for using with your watercolor backgrounds. So I thought we would take a look at how to create these cards today. So here are the dies themselves and you can see they are large outlined images and to adhere these can be tricky because they're so delicate. But we're going to be using this sticket and the sticket is a double sided adhesive um, that is trapped between two release sheets. You can see here how thin it is. You can see that pattern coming through quite clearly and you can pick this up at many of the online stores. I picked mine up at alleystamp.com. So I'm going to lay my cardstock on top of that and then trim it out. So now the back side is covered with adhesive. We're going to do all of our die cutting from this. And when I put it on the big shot, I'm going to put it release paper side down. So that means that all the adhesive, the adhesive is going to be on the back side of my die cut. So this is going to make um, adhering it to my project super easy. So you may need to run your dies through once or twice just to make sure that the die cuts all the way through all of the layers. I didn't have a problem though, I went through once. To remove the dies, I'm going to use my piercing tool and poke through the little release holes on the back of the dies. I'm also gonna use that piercing tool to kind of force out all of the negative spaces of the die because I'm only going to be using the outlines today. And once I've got all these pieces prepped, I can go ahead and start creating my arrangement. And I'm gonna build it from the bottom up. So I'm going to take all of these large outline pieces and arrange them where I want them. This is a dry run and this is going to be a standard size card. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I'm using that panel as my guide so I can be uh, sure where everything is going to lay. I'm going to put this banner on top eventually and then also this butterfly from our large butterfly frame die. And now I'm going to pick all of this up with the press and seal. I've moved the banner and the butterfly out of the way. But I learned this trick from Lori Willison. So this press and seal is sticky on one side. So when I lay it down and press it and peel it back, it's going to bring all of those die cuts with it and they're gonna stay exactly where I had them. So now I can move this off to the side and we can concentrate on watercoloring our background. We're gonna create this explosion of color. And this is incredibly easy to do. So I've got my little makeshift palette here and this is just a stamp storage pocket with a piece of typing paper slipped into it. And I'm going to start laying down color where I know my elements are gonna be. So I already pre-arranged my elements, so I know, or my arrangement, I already pre-arranged, geez, I can't speak. <laughs> I already put together my arrangement so I know exactly where each element is going to be. So I'm going to fill in background color for each of those elements. I'm gonna start by wetting my paper a little bit Again, I'm not being picky here, just throwing down some water and I'm gonna pick up some of this abandoned coral where the rose would be. And I'm gonna drop in a little bit of that scattered straw. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of the um, twisted citron for the leaves. And then I'm gonna drop a little bit of evergreen bough into that. I'm gonna add a little bit more intense color just so I get some variation, soften out some of the edges. And then I'm going to pick up some of the spice or the carved pumpkin, sorry. And I'm gonna put that in where that one flower um, comes drooping down to the right, the lower right. I'm gonna fill in that area with that. So you can see here, this is super easy. There is no method to my madness. Add in some more deeper color. I'm probably, I know, I'm going to add in some splatters. You guys knew it was coming, so. There we go. <laughs> All right, so now you can either allow this to air dry or you can heat it with your heat gun. I have found with the Distress Inks, I don't mind drying it with my heat tool. I prefer to let my traditional watercolors air dry, but with the Distress Inks, sometimes I find I prefer hitting it with the heat tool. I like the look it gives. And once it's all dry, I'm just gonna pick up my arrangement and lay the press and seal over it. And basically I'm just checking to make sure that I like where everything's at exactly where I'm going to line it up. I'm going to test it with the remaining elements I'm going to be adding and I think it's great. I wanted to make a second card as well though so I'm going to put this off to the side and create another background. This time I'm going to keep the color more tight or closer to the elements themselves. I've just moved the other one off to the side but still within sight. This way I have a good visual reference of how big each element is. 
And that way I can keep my background colors more true to size to the actual die cuts themselves. I still want it to spread out beyond it a little bit, but this will allow me to get a little closer in size. Again, I'm just gonna hit this one with my heat gun and then once it's all dry, I can lay my uh, arrangement over top and see how I've done. And I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. So let's move on to finishing off the rest of the card. I'm just gonna remove the release paper now from the back of the dies, and then I'm going to adhere it to the front of my card panel here all at once. Now, if you don't have any stick it, don't worry, you could use some multimedia matte or some Tombow Mono Multi Glue, which I've done quite often. In fact, that's what I usually do, but I had seen this used and I thought, wow, that's kind of brilliant, gotta get me some. I finally got around to ordering it <laughs> and I'm glad I did because it works great for these intricate dies. Now I just wanted to finish off this front panel so I've die cut it using the gift card layers die and it puts this great little faux stitching around the edge. For the sentiment of the card we're going to be using that sending wishing hoping die and here I've die cut sending from white cardstock and I'm going to be embossing that in gold and then I'm going to cut it again from black for the other card. For an accent image, I've die cut a butterfly using the single butterfly included in our small butterfly frame die. And I like the way this looks, but I feel like that sending is getting lost. It needs to be separated from the background. And for that, I'll be using the banner from our Bountiful Blooms die. Now the greeting's going to say sending happy thoughts. And for that, I'm gonna be using the sending wishing hoping stamp set. And instead of stamping that directly onto the background there, I've die cut a circle from vellum using our Love Mom Layers die, and I'm going to emboss that onto just a portion of this. I'm actually going to cut just like the lower third of the circle and layer it behind the banner. So I've treated the vellum with an anti-static tool, and this will keep the embossing powder from sticking anywhere that you don't want it to. It's only going to stick to that Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. So I'm using the Wow Opaque Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder here. And this is perfect for those small sentiments that need to retain their detail. And then I'm gonna cut this about the lower third. And that's what I'm gonna tuck up right behind that banner there. And again, this is gonna help that sentiment stand out from the background. It's also completing that visual circle we have going with the rose to the butterfly. So it all circles back around and draws your attention to the sentiment. Now adhering vellum can be tricky because adhesive always shows through the vellum. Now in the past, my favorite was this Tombow Mono adhesive for vellum. However, it has been discontinued. So in my search for a new one, I found this plus glue tape at alleystamp.com and decided to test it out. Now I hadn't tested it yet. Obviously you can see I'm just opening it for the first time. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. Now in full disclosure, it's not as great as the Tombow. The Tombow is completely translucent, completely clear. You can't see it at all. But you can see here, I've put the plus tape at the top and the Tombow at the bottom. You cannot see that Tombow at all. You can kind of slightly see it's got a little yellowish, yellowish tint, but all in all, it is great for adhesive. Um, you can't really see it unless you're actually looking for it. Okay, so that's what I'm using to adhere my vellum. I'm just going to apply it directly to the vellum and then I'm just gonna lay it in place. I'm not gonna push it down yet. And you wanna make sure that there's nothing, no um, embossing powder chunks or anything like that underneath because they'll get glued up under there and you'll be able to see them through the vellum. So I'm just gonna lay that in place. Then I'm gonna use some 3M foam tape behind our banner here and a little multimedia mat for our butterfly. I will put all of this into place and then I'm going to add that sending greeting. Now this is a delicate die cut, so um, cutting down regular foam into little strips is way too tedious for me. I'm not saying I haven't done it before, but yeah, why? When I have cool tack, clear foam. <laughs> Love this stuff. I only wish they sold it on a bigger roll because I need tons of it. So I'm just going to put this onto the back and um, when you turn it over, you really can't see it. You can kind of see it, but whatever. And wherever the sticky is showing through on the other side, I just use an embossing buddy bag to tap it on. It'll put the little clear powder on it. It's not sticky anymore and we're good to go. 
Now all that's left is our embellishments. And on the first card, I decided to add, I wanted to keep the bright contrast, so I added some enamel dots and some black sequins for Pretty Pink Posh, and I've spared you the pain. I can never figure out where to put these things, and it takes forever. <laughs> so the second one, I wanted to keep it a little softer. Um, so I went with the gold accents. So I die cut and I've stamped and die cut the bird from our Flora and Fauna 2 stamp set. This is our hummingbird. And then I did the sentiments in gold and then added a few white pretty pink posh sequins. And that will finish them off. To be honest, I can't decide which one I like better. I really love the contrast of the one with the black, but in hindsight, I uh, wish I would have done the happy thoughts in black as well. I don't know, what do you think? Leave your opinion in the comment box below, I'd love to know. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Remember, you can find all of the featured W Plus 9 supplies at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers. All of the supplies for today's projects are listed in the description box below as well as on our blog. So be sure to check that if you're looking for anything in particular. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.